when you focus on the breath, try to be sensitive to the image you hold in mind of what the breath is doing and of where you are when you focus on it. Use that as your target to help keep you with the breath. And notice the impact that that particular perception has on your breathing. If you find that the breathing is comfortable, you can hold on to that perception. If it's not, you may want to change the perception, because you may have picked up some ideas about how the breath comes in, how it goes out, what you have to do in order to bring it in, let it go out. That may not be all that helpful. So try experimenting with your perception. One that I found helpful is thinking of the body as a big sponge and all the little holes and passageways and channels of the sponge are all connected so that when you breathe in, the breath energy comes in from all directions. There's nothing in the way. And if you experiment with that perception, it seems to work, and hold on to it. If not, you can experiment on your own. John Lee has other ways of talking about the breath energy, aside from the ones in Method 2. Sometimes he talks about the breath energy coming up the back, or coming up the front of your body. And if you're feeling weak, or your back feels sore, you might think of that kind of energy coming in to give you support. There are lots of different pictures you can hold in mind, or kinetic images about it. What's going on in the body? What are the mechanics of the breathing here? This issue of perception is very important. The Thais have lots of ways of trans translating the word perception. One of them is jam, which you, you fix on something and you hold it in mind. This so is when you fix on a word and what its meaning is. They also use the word my, which means to focus on something or to aim at something or to mean something. This is very important because the mind tends to flow after its perceptions. The Buddha uses the word anusari, which means to drift after or flow after something. And the Thayajans talk an awful lot about the currents of the mind flowing out to a particular object. And we tend to flow out to a target of some kind, something that attracts us. It's like the hummingbirds with the color red. There's something in the way their little brains are hardwired. They see something red and they go for it. You've probably seen them, if you've been around long enough, hovering around the taillights of the van, hoping to get some sugar water out of them. There was a time I was sitting on the rim of the north, <coughs> north rim of the Grand Canyon. It was an evening. There had been a hummingbird hovering around the campsite for a couple of days. And that evening it noticed my ear and looked red and looked round. So it flew over and stuck its beak in my ear. And I could feel the, feel the tongue licking a little bit inside. Unfortunately, I didn't have any sweet water for it to drink in my ear. I remember seeing a documentary one time about a particular kind of beer bottle that was popular in Arizona and it was killing off the beetles. As it turned out, the beer bottle, when it was empty and thrown by the side of the road, looked like a female beetle to the male beetles, and they would mate with the beer bottle. And it turned out they would mate only once in their lives, and that was it. So animals are pretty hardwired, and the human brain can be hardwired about a lot of things, but it doesn't have to be. You can change your perceptions. Because we go flowing out after things, we go flowing out after a narrative. Somebody attracts us. It's because that person stirs up memories and seems like a good target for our thoughts. And however you translate sannyas, memory, perception, label, whatever, the important point is that you can change them. We're not hardwired. 
I guess the perceptions you hold in your mind are a kind of karma. So before you meditate, the Buddha has you think about the perceptions of inconstancy and not-self to help counteract any unhealthy or unskillful perceptions you may have picked up, because otherwise your mind is going to keep flowing out to things outside. It gets bored with the breath after a while and it wants to go out for a little fun, a little entertainment. And it sees something that turns out to be the tail light of the van, or worse. So you apply a different perception. You see something that seems attractive, you apply the perception of the fact that it's inconstant, it's going to involve stress, that it's actually not as attractive as you thought it was. There's a supasanya, the perception of unattractiveness. You think of the body as being attractive, well, take it apart bit by bit by bit and take the different parts and imagine them and locate it in different parts of your apartment or your house. If you suddenly came across one of those parts, what would you think? It helps to dislodge whatever perception you may have that's got you fixated, that acts as the target of your thoughts. Suddenly the target doesn't seem all that attractive. Or the perception of not-self. No matter how much you might try to control certain things, you find that they really do lie beyond your control and they're going to leave you. The Buddha has a whole series of perceptions for dealing with sensuality. That what I like is the borrowed goods. The person who borrows somebody's goods and goes around town to show off how wealthy he is, well, the owners can come and take them at any time. Our sensual desires, our sensual pleasures depend an awful lot on other people being a certain way, providing certain things for us. And they can change their mind at any time. It's a risky business. And so when you hold these other perceptions in mind, they help to cancel out the perceptions that have got you thinking and acting and speaking in unskillful ways. So when you find the currents of your mind flowing out, ask yourself, okay, what's the target? Where are they headed? What's the intention? But it's the perception that's got you deluded. And also, at the same time, try to counteract them with perceptions that having the mind centered is a good thing. In the beginning, when it's difficult, it's very hard to win various parts of the mind over, and different parts are all too ready to go jumping out, flowing out after something else. It strikes them as more interesting, more attractive, more worthwhile. So you also have to develop positive perceptions around the concentration practice. So perceptions, if you don't examine them carefully, can cause you a lot of trouble. But if you realize okay, they can be changed, they're arbitrary. That's the main point to realize about them. That the perceptions we have of things are not built into the way things are. We can change them. So they don't become targets for the mind or don't become targets for activity that are going to cause us regret later on. So when you get used to playing with perceptions of the breath, learn how to play with perceptions of other things as well, especially things that have you attracted and fixated. And you know that it's going to lead to unskillful habits if you keep on with this fixation. And use the Buddha's various tools for deperception. In other words, taking those perceptions apart, replacing with something that helps remind you okay, those are not things you want to aim at. You want to aim back inside. So turn the currents of the mind back inward. Keep them focused here. You want to say you can keep them fixated right here for the time being. There will come a part, <clears throat> come a point in the practice when eventually you have to let go of even the fixation to concentration. But don't be in too great a hurry to do that. And John Lee makes the point that a lot of people, when they start getting serious about the practice, go want to, want to go straight to not self, letting go, letting go, letting go. He says, don't be in too much of a hurry. Work on the concentration. 
push the envelope against those three perceptions of inconstancy, stress, and not-self, trying to make the concentration as constant as you can, as pleasant as you can, as much under your control as you can. Because you're going to need this as your foundation, as your food and nourishment, to withstand the attraction of the, the perceptions that have pulled you astray in the past. Only once you've seen how arbitrary those are can you turn around and take these perceptions apart, the perceptions of keeping the mind with the breath, and of this being your home. At some point the mind will reach a point where it doesn't need a home anymore, but as long as it does need a home, make it right here. <laughs>